I've got a 3 8 inch drill bit in the chuck and I'm going to counter bore. That is, I'm going to drill in only about an eighth of an inch or 3 sixteenths deep. And I've already told you the reason for that. There we go. About 3 sixteenths inch deep. Now we're ready to tap it, and we're going to tap it while it's still in the lathe, but we're not going to do it under power. This is going to be a hand operation. I'm going to put my uh, spring-loaded live center in the tail stock. This part is spring-loaded. I like to use that for tapping because uh, when you back your tap off a little bit, uh, that will recede and less chance of ruining your thread or breaking the tap. So that is now in the tail stock. And I'm using this uh, T-handle type tap wrench today with a tapered tap. That's a 3816 tapered tap. So I'll put start that in the hole. I prefer to do this on the lathe rather than the bench. But I might do just half of it in here. That assures that it's perfectly straight. And uh, then finish it on the, in the uh, bench vise. The, the counter, uh, the fact that I've counterbored that a little bit and that I'm using a taper ta uh, tap also assures me that it's going to be uh, a pretty straight thread. Even if I didn't do the operation in the lathe, and I, I just put some of my, one of my favorite tapping fluids on there, Mystic Metal Mover, I, I've always liked. There's several other good brands too. And now I'm going to put a little pressure against the tap. I'm turning it in. And then I back it out. Advance the tail stock a little bit, turn it in, back it out. It's a nice sharp tap. I I believe I'll do the whole operation in the lathe. Now that I am I know that I'm started uh, good and straight, I'm backing the tail stock out of the way. If you break a tap, you start over. Now these larger taps, uh, very little chance of breaking them off. Now I'm just going to go to the bottom of the hole, and at this time I'm not going to use a plug tap or a bottoming tap because the hole is extra deep. I did that for that reason, and the bolt that we're going to put in there is quite short. If it does bottom out, then I would just uh, I would go in there with a plug tap. But you can see I'm pretty deep, just about on the bottom, and I'm going to back that off, and that operation is complete, and we're ready to put our taper on the other end. And I'll blow that hole out. Be careful when you blow chips out of a hole. Be sure and wear a face mask. I forgot to tell you that when I uh, did the tapping operation moments ago, I did have the headstock locked so it wouldn't revolve as I was tapping. I just did that by putting it in back gears. Now we've got to set the compound for a taper. And using my protractor, I've determined that. Uh, in uh, this manner. Hold it up to the light when you do that. And if there's any light showing through you, you know you're not uh, uh, exactly right. And I gotta adjust that a little bit. And we're at uh, 42 degrees, so I'm gonna set the compound for 21 degrees. I am now going to set the compound at 21 degrees and uh, we may call this the zero position or we may call uh, this the zero position and it's going to vary on uh, the manufacturer or who manufactured the lathe or you might call call it uh, zero when it's, when it's way over uh, you know in the fire position. But loosen your two screws and if this is zero we're going to go 21 degrees past that. Now on the closing lathe, 
the zero witness mark is on the far side here so I have to get in there with a flashlight and I gotta come around and do that with the, probably with the camera off so I'll make that setting and I will lock it and we will feed in this direction now let me point out a couple other things there's three ways to turn a taper I've talked about that before this is called the compound rest method there's also a method using a tailstock uh, or the tailstock offset method which would not be good for this and there's a telescoping taper attachment method but both the tailstock and the attachment method do not allow you to turn steep tapers and this is a relatively steep taper it cannot be done by the tailstock method plus the tailstock method requires that you have your work held between centers so this is the uh, obvious uh, way that this particular type of taper would have to be turned. Now the way this tailstock is numbered in order to get my 21 degrees I actually had to set it at 69 degrees which is what, what I think that's the complement of if I remember my geometry complement or supplement I think the complement of, of the angle uh, 21 degrees is 69 because you add the two together and you have 90 so that's the position uh, of the compound and I'm going to swing the, uh, the entire tool holder around so that it is the way I, the position that I want it that's a round nose tool and then also you need to back your compound off so that you're at the end of the travel there's really only about two and a half inches of travel I believe on this compound so you need to bring that way back that's going to expose some of the dovetail there be careful you don't damage that and then I will bring the entire carriage up so that the tool is where I want it to be and then I will lock the carriage if you don't lock the carriage as you proceed to feed your compound uh, if you remember Newton's third law if you're not careful it'll push the whole carriage away from the work.